Okay, so question 113 of leak code, path sum two. Given the root of a binary tree and an integer target sum, return all root to leaf paths where sum of the node values in the path equals target sum. Each path should be returned as a list of the node values, not node references. A root to leaf path is a path starting from the root and ending at any leaf node. The leaf is a node with no children. So in this example, we have highlighted the root to leaf path, which adds up to the target sum. So we've got target sum of 22, five plus four plus 11 plus two equals 22, and five plus eight plus four plus five also equals 22. So within this solution, we need to traverse the entirety of the tree to reach root to leaf path. So every root to leaf path, so we need to go from here to here, from here to here, here to here, here to here, and here to here. So we can use a depth first search approach, and this is going to be using recursion. And with recursion, we need base cases and a recurrence relation. So recurrence relation. So initially with the base case, if we have nothing within the tree, we can return an empty array because what we want to be returning is an array of all the root to leaf paths. So our base case, if the tree is empty, we return just an empty array. Now let's try and work out the recurrence relation, which is ultimately the hardest part. Let's say we start at five. What do we need to pass down to say the next node in order to computate the root to leaf value or the root to leaf summation and also the array? So we need to pass down the current sum. So we can create current sum as a variable and it will be initialized to zero. We also need current array. And by that, I mean, we need to store the array of each node that we have visited because that is ultimately what we're going to be returning. So that can be initialized as an empty array. So let's walk through this problem. So at level five, current sum is going to be five because we're going to add it to current sum, the node value, and current array is going to be five. We're going to push in five into the current array. Now we go down the left side at four, current sum is going to be nine, five plus four, and the array is going to be five, four. At 11, current sum is going to be 20. It's going to be five, four, and 11. At seven, current sum is going to be 27, and array is going to be five, four, 11, and seven. Now there are a few things to take into consideration here. One is that seven has no children. So the left child and the right child are both pointing to null. And that's what signifies a leaf node, which we can then use to work out whether this root to leaf value is equal to the target sum. And target sum is 22. We check to see whether the current sum is equal to the target sum. In this case, it is not. So we need to backtrack. And what we do when we backtrack is we pop off of current array. We go to the previous node and then we go down other potential paths. So at this node, node two, current sum is 22, path is five, four, 11, and two. We check two's children, they're both equal to null. So the left child is equal to null and the right child is equal to null. So we're at a leaf node. So we check whether the current sum is equal to the target. It is. So we can push into a result array, a current array. And we need to create a copy of this because we're going to be manipulating it further. So it's going to be five, four, 11, two. Once we have completed that, we still need to traverse the rest of the tree to find other potential solutions. So we backtrack. So we pop off of current R, we go back to the previous node. There are no more children to check. So we pop off again. We go back to the previous node. Again, we need to backtrack. We get to the initial node, the root node, and then we can go down the right hand side. So at eight, current sum is 13 and we have five and eight within the current array. We take the left child and we check that. Current sum becomes 26. We have five, eight and 13 within the array. We have reached a leaf node because both children are pointing to null. We can check the total the current sum against the target sum. They're not equal, so we backtrack to the previous node. It has another potential path to go down, so we go down that route. We get to four, current sum 
is 17. We have 5, 8, and 4. Then we go down the left path. Current sum is 22. It's 5, 8, 4, and 5. We have reached a leaf node, so we can check 22 is equal to 22. So we can push our current array into result. Now that we found that solution, we can backtrack at this point, go back to the previous node, check our potential paths. So at this point, we have 18 as the current sum, 5, 8, 4, 1 as the current array. That is not equal to target sum. So we can backtrack, we can backtrack, backtrack. We get to the root node and there are no more potential paths to go down. So we can just return result now. Time complexity is O n squared, where n are the number of nodes in the tree. Space complexity is O n plus m, where n is the stack data structure we use throughout the DFS, and m is the current array which we use to occupy the potential solutions of paths. So let's start off by initializing the result array. Let's create the DFS function. We're going to be passing in root, current sum, and current array. And then we're going to be calling it with root. We're going to initialize current sum to zero. And current array is going to be an empty array. So let's do a sanity check. So if root is equal to null, return an array. Now we need to update the current sum. So current sum is equal to current sum plus root.val. Then we can push into the current array root.val. Remember, we are returning the node values, not the node references. So it's root.val. Then we check if we've reached a leaf node. So we check if root.left and root.right are null. And we also need to check whether the current sum is equal to the target sum. If this is true, then we know we found a root to leaf path. So we can push in that value into res. And we've created a copy here using the spread operator. And we do this because we are still going to be manipulating current array further after this point. So now we need to carry out the recursive call. So DFS, we need to check the left side passing current sum and current R. And we also need to do the right side. And then we need to backtrack. The way we do this is by popping off of current R. Finally, we need to return res, and then we can check to see if this has worked. Okay, let's submit it. And there you have it.